I now call upon Shayan Veer Sardana to deliver the synopsis of their play, and then there were none by Agatha Christie. There were none. Ten strangers are summoned to a remote island. All they have in common is a wicked past they're unwilling to reveal and a secret that will seal their fate. Each has been marked for murder. They are gathered at a manor house on an isolated island at the invitation of an unknown absentee host and are killed off one by one. Would they succeed in outwitting this cunning villain who is determined to kill them? First lot to be arriving in Jim's boat, another lot not far behind. Good evening, Fred. Good evening, Mrs. Rogers. Is that the boat? Yes. Oh dear, already. So much to do. I don't know where to start. All the guests arriving today and no mates till the morning. Calm down, Ethel. Everything's ship shape now. Looks nice, don't it, Fred? Looks neat enough for me. Rich folks like places where it seems. Rich folks are weird. And there's a weird sort of gentleman who built this place. Spend a wicked lot of money on it and then get tired of it. And put the whole thing up for sale. Beats me why the Owens wanted to buy it in the first place. Living on an island. Oh, come off it, Ethel. They'll be here any minute now. That'll be young Jim. I'll be getting along. Don't forget the oil for the engine, Fred. I ought to charge up tomorrow. Head up on the railway. It's at the station now. I'll bring it across first thing tomorrow. And give a hand with the luggage, won't you? Right. So this is it. How perfectly lovely. Miss Clayton. You're Rogers, right? Yes, good evening, miss. Will you please bring up my luggage in Captain Lombard's? Very good, miss. Thank you. Have you been here before? No, but I've heard a lot about the place. An old pal of mine built this place. It's a very sad and poignant story. A love story. Yes, ma'am, the saddest of all. He fell in love with the famous Lily Logan, married her, bought the island, and built this place for her. Sounds most romantic. Poor Johnny. He thought by cutting her off from the rest of the world without even a telephone as a means of communication, he could hold her. And of course, the fair lily tired of her ivory tower and escaped. Uh-huh. The place was sold. And here we are. Well, I ought to find Mrs. Owen and the others will be up in a minute. In the meantime, do you think I could have a drink? I'm very dry. Of course you could. What's yours? No. Not for me, nor on duty. A good secretary is never off duty, though. <laughs> really? This is so exciting. What is? All of this. The smell of the sea, the gulls, the beach, and this lovely house. I'm going to enjoy myself. I think you are. I think we are. Here's to you. You're lovely. Where is Mrs. Owen? Mr. and Mrs. Owen won't be down from London until tomorrow, miss. I thought you knew. Tomorrow? But I've got a list here of the guests expected, if you would like to have it. The second boatload is just arriving. It seems so silly to have sent us both on the first boat and all the others in the second. Well, I suggested to the boatman that there was no use of waiting for the other passengers. That <laughs> and five shillings soon started off the engine. You shouldn't have done that. Well, I thought the young man was rather nice looking. But of course, you think a man in his 30s is more attractive? I don't think, my darling. I know it. <laughs> this old place you got here. I'm Vera, Mrs. Owen's secretary. Mrs. Owen's has been detained in London, I'm afraid, and will not be down until tomorrow. Oh. Too bad. May I introduce Captain Lombard, Mr. Marston. Anthony Marston. Have a drink, sir. Oh, thank you. Follow me. Wonderful place you have here. I am Mrs. Owen's secretary. Mrs. Owen's has been detained in London, I'm afraid, and will not be down until tomorrow. Oh, thank you. How are you? My name's Lombard. Davis. Davis is the name. Mr. Davis, Mr. Marston. Mr. Marston, Mr. Davis. How are you, Mr. Marston? Pleased to meet you. What a view. 
What a sight. Reminds me of South Africa, this place. Does it? What part? That's my natal... Oh, uh, natal Durban, you know. Really? Yes. Well, here's to temperance. Do you know South Africa? Me? No. Oh. How do you do? General Mackenzie, right? I am Mrs. Owens' secretary. Mrs. Owens has been detained in London, I'm afraid, and will not be down until tomorrow. May I introduce Captain Lombard, Mr. Marston, and... Davis. Davis is the name. Whiskey and soda, sir? Uh, thanks. You in service? Formally. In the King's African Rifle. Too tame for me in the peacetime. I chugged it. What kind of place is this, I wonder? I have a great time here with walking, making me walk so much. Where's Mrs. Owens? Miss Trent, right? I am Mrs. Owens' secretary. Mrs. Owens has been detained in London, I'm afraid, and will not be down until tomorrow. Did she miss the train? I expect so. May I introduce Captain Lombard, Mr. Marston, General Mackenzie? I hope you'll met on the boat. And Davis. Davis is the name. May I take your case? You. I suppose you know, young man, that you left us standing there on the wharf. I'm afraid, Miss Brent, I was to be blamed for that. I guess she's the kind of person who just can't help missing train. Not at all. Mrs. Owen is in the least like that. Perhaps it was her husband's fault. She hasn't got a husband. God, I should like to go to my room. Of course, I'll take you there. I'm afraid our host and hostess hasn't arrived yet. My name's Lombard. Mine's Walker. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do, sir? Davis. Davis is the name. I must say, wonderful place you have here. Quite unique. As you say, quite unique. Badger Berkeley, has he rolled up yet? When is he coming? He is not coming. No one of the name Berkeley. Well, the dirty old double crosser. Well, leave it. Let's go and explore. How miserable. Can I have your keys, sir? Yes. Can you tell me if Lady Constance Culmington is expected here? Lady Constance Culmington? I don't think so, sir. Unless she's coming down with Mr. and Mrs. Owen. Oh. Allow me, sir. Can I have your keys? No, thanks. I'll unpack for myself. Shall I show you to your room? Please. Yeah, you are, sir. I got Rogers. How are you? Davis. Davis is the name. Mine's Armstrong. Dr. Armstrong, I believe. Yes. Have a drink? No, I never touch it. Do you mind if I do? Mine's empty. Not a bit. I've been having a look around the island. Quite wonderful place, isn't it? Wonderful. Such a haven of peace this was. Too peaceful for some, I dare say. Wonderfully restful. Wonderful for the nerves. I am a nerve specialist, you know. Yes, I know that. Did you come down by the train? No, I motored down. Oh, how long did it take you? I didn't hurry. I never hurry. You must excuse me. I must have a word with Mr. Owen. Oh, but Mr. Owen isn't coming down. You rang, sir. Yes, Rogers. What time supper? Dinner is at 8 o'clock, sir. Got a good place here. Yes, thank you, sir. Been here long? Just under a week, sir. So, I suppose you don't know much about the crowd that's here? No, sir. All old friends of the family? I really couldn't say, sir. Oh, well. Oh, Rogers. Could you please show me my room? I'll show you, sir. Good. Hello. Have you two met each other? Mr. No, Armstrong, Miss Clayton. Hello, Mr. Armstrong. Hi. Wizard car, isn't it? I could go out of 100 out of her. I touched 90 in Salisbury Plain. Not too bad. Oh, did you come from London? Yes, I did. Oh. I think you passed me in the road. Did and I? you nearly drove me into the ditch. Did I? 
Sorry. Oh, well, what about a drink? Good idea. Good afternoon, Mrs. Owen. Why, Mrs. Owen? Well, you'd make the most beautiful wife to any wealthy businessman. Do you always flirt so outrageously? Always. Well, now we know. Damn silly we don't know each other. I could give you a lift back down. She likes the way she's going back. Oh, look, aren't they cute? Those ten little China soldiers. What are oh. you talking about? And there's the old nursery rhyme. What soldiers? What rhyme? The rhyme. Ten little soldier boys going out to dine. One went and choked himself, and then there were nine. Nine little soldier boys sat up very late. One overslept himself, and then there were eight. Eight little soldier boys traveling in Devon. One got left behind, and then there were seven. Ladies and gentlemen, silence, please. You are charged with these indictments that you did respectively and at diverse times commit the following. Edward Armstrong, that you did cause the death of Louisa Mary Cleese. William Henry Blore, that you brought about the death of James Stephen Landor. Emily Caroline Brent, that you were responsible for the death of Beatrice Taylor. Vera Elizabeth Clayton, that you killed Peter Gilby Hamilton. Philip Lombard, that you were guilty of of 21 men, members of an East African tribe. John Gordon Mackenzie, that you sent your wife's love, Arthur Richmond, to his death. Anthony James Marston, that you were guilty of the murder of John and Lucy Combs. Thomas Rogers and Ethel Rogers, that you brought about the death of Jennifer Brady. Lawrence John Walk, murder of Edward Seton. Prisoners at the bar, have you anything to say in your defense? Nothing much. She's fainted. That's all. She'll be down in a minute. Get some brandy. Rogers, get some brandy. Who is that speaking? It sounded... What's going on here? What kind of practical joke was that? Where the devil is in that voice come from? You are charged with these indictments. Turn it off! Turn it off! It's horrible! A disgraceful and heartless practical joke. So you think it's a joke, do you? What else could it be? At the moment, I'm not prepared to give an opinion. Don't know what the devil said it on. We must inquire into that. Ethel, Ethel, it's all right, all right. Pull yourself together. That voice, that awful voice, that judgment. Where's the brandy? Here you go, Mrs. Rogers. I'm fine, just your turn. Of course it did, give me your turn too. I'd like to know who. <coughs> who was it that put that record on the gramophone? Was it you, Rogers? I was just obeying orders, sir, that's all. Whose orders? Mr. Owens. Let me get this quite clear. Mr. Owen's orders were what exactly? I was to put the record on the gramophone in the study. I'd find the record in the drawer in there. It had a name on it. I just thought it was a piece of music. Is there a title? A title? Yes, sir. It's entitled So and So. The whole thing is preposterous, preposterous. Slinging accusations all about like this. Something must be done about it. This fellow Owen. That's Where just it! Is? Who is he? That is exactly what we must get into very carefully. I should suggest that you get your wife back to bed, Rogers, then come back here. Yes, sir. I'll give you a hand. Preposterous. That's what it is. Preposterous. She'll be fine in a minute. I've given her a sedative. Now then, doctor. You will want a drink after all this? No, thank you. I never touch alcohol. Oh, so you said. You have this one, General. Now, Rogers, tell us what you know about Mr. Owen. I really can't say, sir. You see, I've never seen him. What do you mean, you've never seen him? We've been here just under a week, sir, my wife and I. We were engaged by letter. Have you got that letter? The letter engaging us? Yes, sir. Go on with your story. We arrived here, just like the letter said, on the 4th. What next? 
Then yesterday, to the Morning Post, I received another letter saying Mr. and Mrs. Owen might be detained. Here's the letter, sir. Hmm. Headed, rich hotel, and typewritten. Coronation machine number five. Quite new. No defects. Enzyme paper make. We shan't get much out of this. We may send it for fingerprints, but it's been handled too much. Quite the little detective, aren't you, Mr. Davis? Hasn't they got some fancy Christian name? Norman Ulick Owen? Quite a mouthful. I am obliged to you, Mr. Marston. I think the time has come for all of us to pool all the information we have regarding our unknown host. You see, I received a letter from a woman whom I met at a certain summer resort two, three years ago, and I'm quite sure that I never met or become friendly anyone with the name Owen. Have you got that letter, Miss Brent? Um, I have it. I'll fetch it for you. Miss Claythorne. I never actually met Mrs. Owen. I wanted a holiday post and applied at a secretarial agency. Here's the letter. August 8th, 12th, and from Paddington, yours sincerely, Una Nancy Owen. Hmm. Mr. Marston. Well, I haven't gotten a wire. I got this letter back from Pal of Mine, back to Berkeley. I'm surprised he hasn't arrived yet. I haven't got the wire. Thank you. And you, Dr. Armstrong? I think I may admit that my visit here had been professional. Mr. Owen was worried about his wife's health, and he wanted a report without her being alarmed. In this case, he regarded this visit as an ordinary guest. Here's the letter that I received, Mr. Walgrave. August 8th, 1240 from Barrington, yours truly, UN. Hmm. The signature is slightly ambiguous. Here is my own decoy letter from an old friend of mine, Lady Constance Culminton. Look here, I've just thought In a of minute. But I... We will take one thing at a time, if you don't mind, Captain Lombard. General Mackenzie. I got this letter from this fellow Owen. Thought I would have met him sometime at the club. But he mentioned some old cronies of mine who were to be here. I haven't kept the letter, I'm afraid. Thank you. And you, Captain Lombard? Same thing. I haven't kept the letter either. Just now, we had a somewhat disturbing experience. An apparently disembodied voice spoke to us all by name, offering certain definite accusations. At the moment, I am interested in a minor point. Amongst the names called out was that of William Henry Blow. As far as we know, there's no one here named Blow. The name of Davis was not called out. What do you have to say about that, Mr. Davis? Catch out of the bag, it seems. I suppose I'd better admit my name isn't Davis. You are William Henry Blow? Yes, that's right. I'll add something to that. Not only are you here under a false name, Mr. Blow, but in addition to that, I've noticed this evening that you are a first-class liar. You claim to have come from Natal and South Africa. Well, unlucky for you, I know South Africa too well. And I can swear on my life that you have never set your foot there. You gentlemen have got me wrong. I am an ex CID man and oh, I was put onto this a job. Copper. By who? By Mr. Owen. Said I was to join the house, posing as a guest, and said I was to keep an eye on all of you and send a list of all your names too. Any reason given? Yes. Said Mrs. Owen had got some valuable jewels. Mrs. Owen, my foot! I don't believe there's any such person here. Your conclusions are, I think, justified. You like Norman Owen. Una Nancy own each time that goes to say you and own or by a slight stretch of fancy unknown. But it's fantastic. Mad. Yes, I have no doubt in my mind that we have been invited here by a madman, possibly a very dangerous homicidal lunatic. Oh my god. Whoever has enticed us here has taken the trouble to find out a great deal about us. It's a very, very great deal. It's all very well to make acquisitions. A pack of damn lies. Slander. It's iniquitous. Wicked. A lie. A wicked lie. We never did. Neither of us. Don't know what the damn fool I was getting at. I wish to say this. Our unknown friend accuses me of the murder of one Edward Seton. 
I remember Seddon perfectly well. He was brought before me for trial in June 1930. On the account of the evidence, he was certainly guilty. The jury summed up accordingly and the man was duly executed. I wish to say this before you all, that my conscience on the matter is perfectly clear. I did my duty and nothing more. I passed sentence on a rightfully convicted murderer. Did you know Seton at all? I mean, personally? No, I knew nothing of Seton previous to the trial. The old man's lying. I swear he's lying. Fellow's a madman, absolute madman. No truth in what he said about uh, Arthur Richmond. Richmond was one of my best officers. I sent him on reconnaissance in 1970. He was killed. Also, I would like to say, they sent very much. Slur on my wife, been dead a long time. Best woman in the world, Caesar's wife. Well, I was just thinking, John and Lucy Combs are a bunch of kids I drove over in Cambridge. BC back then. Because of them, I had my license cancelled out for a year. Their spearing's all wrong. All young men like you are a danger to the community. It was just pure accident. Might I say a word, sir? Go ahead, Rogers. There was a mention, sir, of me and Miss Rogers and of Miss Jennifer Brady. We were with Miss Brady when she died. There was a storm, sir, the night she died. We couldn't get the doctor to her. Devoted to her, we were. There was never a word against us. Never a word. Came into a national something at her death, didn't you, Rogers? Miss Brady left us a legacy in recognition of our faithful service. And why wouldn't she? Yo, what about you, Mr. Blue? What about me? You know, your name was on the list? Yes, I know, I know. Landor, you mean? That was a London and commercial bank robbery. Landor was convicted on your evidence. You were the police officer in charge of the case. Yes, I was, my lord. Landor got penal servitude for life and died a year later in Dartmoor. He was a crook. It was him who put the night watchman out. The case was clear from the start. If I remember correctly, you were complimented, I think, on your able handling of the case? Yes. I got my promotion. I was only doing my duty. Convenient word, Jeep. What about you, Mr. Armstrong? I am at a loss to understand the matter. The name meant nothing to me. What was it? Of course, it's a long time ago. Wait, it possibly may relate to one of the operation cases in the hospital. When a patient dies, it's always the surgeon's fault. And then, it's better to take up nerves than give up surgery? Some obviously give up breathing, you know? I protest. You have no right to insinuate such things. I never touch alcohol. I never suggested you did. I, and you, Miss Clayton, what do you have to say? I was nursery governess to Peter Hamilton. We were in Cornwall for the summer. He was forbidden to swim out far. One day, when my attention was distracted, he started off. He co I couldn't get there in time. I couldn't save him. Thank you. Miss Brent? I have nothing to say. Nothing? Nothing. You reserve your defense. There's no question of defense. What a law-abiding lot we seem to have. We are waiting for your story, Captain Lombard. Well, I'm sorry to dis disappoint all of you. It's just that I plead guilty. It's all true that I left those natives alone in the bush. Matter of self-preservation. You abandoned your men? <laughs> now, Rogers, who else is there on this island apart from ourselves, you and, of course, your wife? Nobody, sir. Nobody at all. Thank you. It is in my opinion that we leave this island as soon as possible. Most probably tonight. I'll beg your pardon, sir, but there's no boat on the island. No boat at all? No, sir. Can't you telephone to the mainland? There's no telephone either. Fred Narakot comes over every morning. <sighs> what a mouthful, isn't it? Well, it's more thriller. Well, I was thinking. I'm, my, my, my legal life is narrowing now. I'm full of crime. Here's to it. Uh, uh. My God, he's dead! Never knew a man could die like that, just to put joking fit. In the middle of life, we are in death.
A man doesn't die of a mere choking fit. General Mackenzie, Marston's death isn't what we call a natural death. Was there something in the whiskey? Cyanide. Perhaps. Potassium cyanide. He put it himself. Suicide? Uh, that's a wrong go. Oh, look. Here's one of the little puzzles of the commander chief. Broken. We've been up to the top, but no sign of the boat yet. How's the weather looking? The wind has freshened a bit. No proper harbor. If the wind comes to blow from the southeast, a boat would just get dashed into pieces against the rocks. I think the pleasures of living on an island are rather overrated. I wonder if the boat's coming. And Roger, he ought to be about. I say, suppose he's hopped it. There's no boat on the island. You've just said so. Yes. We only have Roger's word for that. And suppose there's one boat on the island and he's nipped off it in the first thing. Where's the poor master now? In the study. Put him there myself. But would it have been possible for anyone to tamper with Marston's drink without our seeing him? Oh, yes. there you are, sir. I've been looking for you all over the place. Could you come up and take a look at my wife? Yes, of course. But is she still feeling under the weather? She's... she's... You're not leaving the island without me. I wish the boat could come. Yes, I think the sooner we can get in touch with the police, the better. The police? The police have to be notified in a case of suicide. You know, Miss Brent? Oh, yeah. Of course. Feeling like breakfast? Leslie, Leslie, my dear. No, I'm not. I'm very hot late on. Forgive me. I mistook you for my wife. Good morning. Seem to have overslept myself. Both here yet? No. Hello? That's strange. What? What is? You remember? We found one of these little fellows smashed last night. Yes. Ought to leave nine. They ought to leave nine. I'm certain there were ten of them when we arrived. Well? There are only eight. So there are. None of us will leave this island. Roger is dead. No! What? How? No. Brought, I gave her yesterday and came down without disturbing her. She is dead about five hours, I should say. What was it? Heart? Impossible to say that, but could have been. She could have been poisoned, I suppose, doctor? It's perfectly possible. What exactly did happen? Well, I can't say that without having an autopsy, but her heart certainly failed to beat. But what caused it to fail? Conscience. What do you mean by that, Miss Brent? You all heard. She was accused, together with her husband, of having deliberately murdered her former employer. And no lady. Call her death if you prefer. An act of God. My dear lady, in my experience of ill doing, Providence leaves the work of conviction and chastisement to us mortals. And the process is often fraught with difficulties. So th there are no shortcuts. So that's your idea, Miss Brent? Well, why not? They know there's no immediate danger to them. And then last night, some lunatic goes around and spills the beans. What happens is the woman cracks, goes to pieces. Did you see him hanging around her when she was ill? No, not all husbandly solitude. They have done a murder and got away with it. They are feeling quite safe about it. But now, when the murder has been found out, it's the woman who will give the show away. And him, he's all right. And then the husband makes a nice cup of tea, puts in a nice little dollop of something, and when she's had it, he tells the doctor she ain't had nothing. Excuse me, I could manage some fried potatoes for lunch. Lunch? Lunch? We shan't be here for lunch. When the hell's the boat coming? You'll pardon me, sir, but the boat won't be coming. How the hell do you know the boat is not coming? Fred Narcot's always here before it. And it's not Rogers? How the 
hell does he know the boat is not coming? Mr. Roar! What? He is pulling a fast one if you ask me. But can't we do something? Oh, yes, we can. We can find the funny gentleman who's staging this little joke. And believe me, the sooner we get hold of him, the better. Because in my opinion, he's as mad as a hatter and as dangerous as a rattlesnake. Wait, that's a warning. Ten little soldier boys. There were ten of us after Narukot left. Weren't there? Yes. Ten little soldier boys going out to die. One went and choked himself. Marston. Marston choked himself, didn't he? And then? Nine little soldier boys sat up very late. One overslept himself. Overslept himself? The last part fits Mrs. Rogers rather well, doesn't it? You don't think? Do you mean he wants to kill us all? Yes, I think he does. And each one fits the rhyme? None of us leave the siren. Can you shut up, Grandpa? The sooner we get to work, the better. Come on, Blood. Come on, Armstrong. We'll make short work of it. Has anybody got a revolver by any chance? I suppose that's too much to hope for. I've got one. Do you always carry that with you? Yes. You see, I've been in pretty tight places. Now then, I suggest you, Captain Lombard, search the house while Dr. Armstrong and I search the island. Right. How got to be easy? No secret doors or sliding panels. Mind you, he doesn't get you before you get him. Don't worry about me. But you two had better keep for each other. Because remember, one god left behind. Come on, Armstrong. Such an energetic young man, Captain Lombard. They're all wasting time, wasting time. You think so? I think we should all sit quietly and wait. Wait for what? For the end, of course. What do you mean? Mistakes were being made all the time. I made a blunder. I sacrificed one of my best men. Yes, it was easy. Leslie never knew. She never knew I would found out. Oh, don't. It was a murder. Serves him damn well right, I thought. What well, do you, you know, don't you? What do you mean? I thought you'd understand this later on. I thought you really would. I, I thought you'd be glad to know that the end was coming. Oh. I'm frightened. I Don't talk to me that way. I know I that you know the end was coming. I want you to wait. Wait till less to me. I, I don't know. I'm frightened. All correct. No secret passages. One corpse. Don't! I say, you do look a bit low. How about a glass of drink to steady your nerves? A drink? Ten corpses at nine o'clock at this house? And all you say, have a drink? Why not? An old man going quite cracks. Have a drink. Ten people accused of murder? That's all right. Just have a drink. Definitely. Everything's all right, as long as you have a drink. Unpleasant, young man. I can't find it anywhere. Is anything the matter? I'm really worried about the general. He seems very ill. You can go for the board, general. His sin has found him out. What, what about Beatrice Taylor? Beatrice Taylor? That girl, Beatrice Taylor, was in my service. She was a loose girl with no morals. Disgusting. It was sometime before I found out she was what they call in trouble. It was a great shock to me too. Her parents were decent folk and raised her up strictly. I'm glad to say they didn't condone her behavior. Did she drown herself? Yes, she did. How old was she? Seventeen. Only seventeen? Did you blame yourself once you found out what happened? Certainly not. There was nothing with which to reproach myself. I believe, I believe you really felt like that. That makes it even more horrible. Do you know where the gentleman is? Breakfast is ready. Sir Lawrence Walgrave is sitting out there in the sun. Mr. Blore and Dr. Armstrong are searching the island. I shouldn't be worried about them. What luck did you have? There's no cow in the island, no cave. No one could hide anywhere. What about the house, Lombard? No one. Breakfast is getting cold. Breakfast? Come on, General. I can't have breakfast, I say, sir. Good God! One God left behind. There's a knife in Mackenzie's back. He's dead! He's dead! 
Exactly, my dear sir. Don't you realize that this clever, cunning criminal is always comfortably one stage ahead of us? There's only one place where a successful criminal could hide and get away with it. One place? Where? Here, in this room. Mr. Owen is one of us. So, Lawrence? Well, Mr. Blow. I wanted to get you alone. I think what you said this morning was right. This damn murderer is one of us. And I think I know which one. Miss Emily Brent. <laughs> so, your answer to the problem is perhaps Miss Brent? Yes. Oh, you think what a beautiful day it was this morning? Yes, truly. If Miss Clayton were to suspect one of us three, that would be a rather awkward question. I know it isn't any of you. If you ask me who I suspect, I'd say Dr. Armstrong. Armstrong? But remember, somebody else gave her the brandy. Yes, her husband had a good opportunity of administering a drug. My God, it's something like a storm. No hope of rescue until it dies out. Is that coffee? Good. You see, I'm taking the coffee now. Where's Rogers? Excuse me, but does anybody know what's become of the top bathroom curtain? The bathroom curtain? Yes, sir. Scarlet oil silk. It's missing. Anyone seen the scarlet oil silk curtain? No good, I'm afraid. Rogers? It doesn't matter, sir. I just thought it was odd. I wish you would like some coffee. It's very wet. Rogers! Anyway, what's become of Armstrong? He went to his room to rest. Somebody probably batted him one by now. Captain Lombard, I don't think you understand that we're all in grave danger. Of the ten people that came to this island, seven are left. And out of those seven, there are seven little soldier boys. I think Dr. Armstrong might prefer to see me. He may not admit you, Captain Lombard. He may be afraid of your revolver. Well, I've led a rather adventurous life, I say. That's a tall story, if you ask me. If it's true, why didn't he tell it to us last night? He might have thought that this was exactly the emergency he had been prepared. Perhaps it is. We must leave before it's too late. Sleeping badly, Doctor? Yes. Do you ever dream that you are in a court and sentencing a man to death? I should not lose any sleep over the death of Edward II. The jury liked him. I could see it. However, I cooked Seton's goose. Where's Rogers? He's been a long time. My God. Are there only five? What? Rogers in Lombard? No, Rogers! 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 Where the hell blew Rob to like a madman? Philip! Two soldiers have gone. Two? I thought it was you. Well, what is it? In the scullery. Is he? No, no. Oh, yes. He's dead all right. How? Somebody must have come up behind him while he was bent over the wooden box. Somebody stabbed him with an axe. <laughs> One went and chopped himself, and then there were six. Stop six. it, Vera. Stop it. Six little soldiers playing with a hive. A bumblebee stung one, and then there were five. A bumblebee stung one? We all look pretty healthy and spry. Until and of course. No, no. No. God, no! A hypodermic syringe! The modern bee sting. She was sitting right there. One of us. One of us. Which of us?
have to relieve the gloom, haven't I? Let's play a game. What about inventing one called suspicions, where A suspects B, B suspects C, and so on. Well, let's start with you, Mr. Blow. I'm your fancy, aren't I? Yes, I wouldn't say no to that, because you've acted suspiciously from the start. You came here with our revolver, and now you say you've lost it. Those are two different likely stories. Why don't you use your brains, Blow? If I'd wanted to, I could have shot the whole lot of you. Well, I, I, I tell you, we shall all be dead. But one, you think about something else, he's thinking now. Poor Louise, what was her name? Cleese? Was it the nerve that made you do a doctor? No, drink. I used to be a heavy drinker. God, help me. I operated when I was drunk, with my hand shaking all over the place. She was a big and a heavy countrified woman, I should say. And I killed her. No one ever knew. Gentlemen, we are adopting all the measures that are possible. So long as we remain within sight of each other, a repetition of the tragedies that have occurred is, must be impossible. You're very sorry, Ms. Vera. There's nothing to say. I wonder what the time is. Half past eight. That's all. The murderer's got everything on his side. Even the weather seems to be falling in with his plans. Anyway, I don't think it's blow. I don't think it's the doctor either. On the other hand, Ms. Vera, you look to me as eminently sane. Therefore, you require a good motive to murder someone. I have thought of something. This man says that he's a police officer, and that too he initially lied about. He also pretends to be a South African millionaire. Perhaps this police officer is another impersonation. Well, what about the food idea? No, no, let's stay here. Suppose I go in and bring in a ton of biscuits. Good idea. How oh, blow, an unopened tin, blow. How does it go? Five little soldier boys? Going in for law. One got in the chancery. In the chancery? But how could I reply? Unless, of Precisely, course. my dear young lady. It's why I'm sitting here right now, all so quietly. That awful rhyme! It keeps going round and round in my head. I think I'll remember it till I die. Where's Blow already? Put your hands up. Search him. He's clear. Satisfied, are you? No, thank you. Starving ourselves won't do us any good. How are we off for cigarettes? Well, I haven't got any. I've run out too. I've got a whole box upstairs in my suitcase. I'll get it. I could do with the cigarette myself. Not bad, these biscuits. In the meantime, stay right where you are. Miss Claythorne strikes me as a very cool and resourceful young lady. Quite remarkably so. So that's your idea? That she's the guilty party? Hardly likely. A woman? Doctor, you and I see women through different angles. I was horrified to death. It went right around my throat. What did? A long strand of sea seaweed touched my throat. In the dark, I thought it was a wet hand that strangled me. Wait, who put that seaweed there? When I find out, he'll be sorry he was ever born. It 
it's all right, it's only me. Here we are. Who fired that shot? <laughs> He's dead! You, you put it there. You put that TV there. You did it all so you could kill that old man in the dark. You all, you're crazy. He was, he was all planned long ago. That's why you wanted the red curtain and the, the, the knitting wool. All of you are crazy. Get me out of here. Something seems always so different in the daylight. I already told you guys, it was Dr. Armstrong. You did, my sweet, you did. Until, of course, you went completely bad and started suspecting all of us. Miss Clayton, you want to say something? What exactly happened? Well, one shoe lying perfectly on the cliff edge. Inference, Dr. Armstrong has gone and committed suicide. But we know he hasn't drowned himself. He just wanted to make it appear as though he was the seventh victim, all according to the great plan. How do you think Armstrong got hold of your revolver? After an hour, we went to sleep. I heard somebody pass my door. I went to your room. You were all there. Then. I went to Armstrong's. It was empty. Then I came, here, came down here, right here, and the window there was open and found my revolver lying just beside it. Look here. I want to go after that fellow. What a dog of the bulldog breed you are, blow. By the way, between friends and without prejudice, you did go in for that little spot of perjury, didn't you? Well... I don't suppose it makes any odds now. You think we're in the same boat? Well, Lando was innocent, all right? Don't be an ass. You know what I'm beginning to think now? You know what I think? You guys are being very childish. Sorry, teacher. Of course it is in Lombard. He was with me. Think of the rhyme. Four little soldier boys went out to the sea. A red herring swallowed one. And then there were three. A red herring. That's Armstrong's pretended suicide. But it's only a red herring. He isn't really dead. Three little soldier boys walking in the zoo. A big bear hugged one, and then there were two. He'll have a job with this one. There's no zoo on this island. What's that? A boat? A boat? Ah! Oh my god! Well, Blow's got his. How? A booby trap, all set. Wire attached to a wire across the door, attached to something above. Philip, let's get out of here, please. Anywhere, not this house. Perhaps you are right. Hello, that's strange. Something washed up on the show. What's that? A body? Oh God! It's Armstrong on the high water mark. That means there's only two of us. That means now we know where we are. Now we know where we are? I didn't. I didn't. Please, believe me. I didn't kill that child. It was someone else. A man. No Who? Peter's uncle. He this, was in love with me. This is quite interesting. Peter was born after his father's death. If he was a girl, he would have gotten everything. He was wicked, and I didn't know. One day, we were in the beach. Then I had to go back to the house. When I came back, I saw Peter swimming to the rock. I knew he hadn't a chance. The current had already gotten him. But I went after him. He would try to stop me, but I pushed past him, and I went to save Peter. But I couldn't get there in time. 
You certainly are an accomplished liar, Vera. I am no saint, but there's one thing I don't stand for, and that's murder. You won't stand for murder? <laughs> what about those natives you left to die in Africa? For once, just once, mark you. I played the hero. I risked my life to save the lives of my men. I left them my rifle, ammunition, and all the food there was, and took a chance through the bush. And the rumors got around that I deliberately abandoned my men. Why didn't I see it? Why didn't I? It was all over you your face. Fool me a murderer! You, young, beautiful, and quiet, don't, don't. quiet, mad. No, mad, stop! <laughs> My ten little soldier plan has finally come into play. How do you feel, Captain Lombard? Did you get hurt? You know, Miss Claythorn, all my life, I've wanted to murder someone. I've had this bloodthirstiness. But no, I'm a judge of the high court. I can't possibly do that, can I? You know, Dr. Armstrong, I went up to him, and I suggested that we could catch the murderer together. That little fool fell for it. And now the time has come for you to pay for your sins. After all, a man told me when I was over the Atlantic that a woman he met married a little child I just did. for him. I did. Your time has come. You have to redeem yourself for your sins. Didn't you like him? Didn't you like Captain Lombard? But well, look at him, shot dead. This is your time. Please, Miss Clayton. Stage is all yours. It's okay. You won't get hurt. It's just one little hanging guess. Now, we wouldn't want anyone thinking you killed yourself, would we? <laughs> and then there were none. <laughs> 